okay so up in the next we have diuretics so here is the proximal convoluted tubule the descending limb of loop of nla the thick ascending limb of the loop of nla here is the dct and the collecting tubule right in the thick descending loop of Henle, we have sodium potassium 2 chloride symport, which is blocked by furosemide. So, if this is blocked, there will be no more absorption of sodium, potassium, and chloride. So, if there is no absorption of sodium, it will cause natriuresis. And this natriuresis pulls water along with it, it will produce diuresis also. It will also lose potassium, therefore, it will cause caliuresis. And at the top, these diuretics are secreted from organic acid transporters in the PCT. And it is the site from where the uric acid is also excreted. So uric acid and the diuretics are transported from the same transporters. So diuretics will compete with uric acid. So it will not allow uric acid to be excreted. So it will also cause hyperuricemia. And all the diuretics also cause hyperlipidemia. In the DCT, we have sodium chloride symport. Right, so it, hel it helps in absorption of sodium and chloride and sodium will be sent with the help of sodium potassium ATPase and chloride will be absorbed with the help of chloride channels. Also on the basolateral side we have calcium sodium symport which brings in the sodium and sends out the calcium and calcium will be absorbed from the lumen with the help of calcium channels. If you block sodium chloride symport with the help of thiazide there will be no more sodium in the cell. If there is no sodium in the cell, sodium cannot be absorbed with the help of sodium potassium ATPase, so this will stop working. Now in order to make this sodium potassium ATPase work, this calcium sodium symport will start working more. And how it can work more? It will absorb more calcium from the lumen so that calcium will be dumped outside and sodium will be dumped inside so that this sodium can be utilized to carry on the work for sodium potassium ATPase right so it helps in absorption of calcium who the thiazides therefore it is also used in renal stones there will be no more calcium release so there will be no more stone formation it will also cause natriuresis and diuresis and hyperuricemia and hyperlipidemia on the collecting tubules we have aldosterone working you remember aldosterone works with the help of cytosolic receptors and makes the upregulation of sodium and potassium channels. It will absorb sodium and along with sodium water will be also absorbed and it will dump out potassium. If you block aldosterone with the help of spironolactone, there will be no more absorption of sodium and water and there will be no more excretion of potassium. So there will be least absorption of sodium and water so it will cause diuresis and if there will be no more excretion of potassium there will be hyperkalemia in the blood so these are potassium saving drugs and all these drugs are potassium wasters cause they waste the potassium. The site of action of loop diuresis is thick ascending loop of NLA. All of the following are indication of thiazide except hyperlipidemia it causes hyperlipidemia. The diuretic group that does not require access to the tubular lumen is the spironolactol that crumbs when works on the cytosolic receptor it does not require lumen that's the mineral corticoid antagonist. Which of the following is associated with thiazide diuretics look it causes hypokalemia because it loses potassium it causes hyperuricemia because it competes with the organic transport and it causes hyperlipidemia and it causes importance too. And that's why, please be careful if some boys wants to lose their weight with the help of diuretics, keep this thing in mind that it also causes importance.